When Europeans first arrived to the Americas, they encountered an incredible variety of social organization among the many hundreds of native nations. While some lived purely as hunters and gatherers, others built cities on par in size and opulence to the cities of the old world. In between these two extremes, we find a whole spectrum of economic and political organization. While agriculture, trade, crafts and mining were known, warfare had a special status in most Indian nations. Mm -hmm. There is one thing we both worship, and it is blue sky. There is one thing we both worship, and it is blue sky. There is one thing we both worship, and it is blue sky. There is one thing we both worship, and it is blue sky. Mm -hmm. The cruel city of Tenochtitlan was perhaps the largest metropolis in pre-Columbian America, housing anywhere from 200 to 300,000 inhabitants. Many of these were slaves, and many others were prisoners taken in raids against neighboring nations. The Aztec Empire was bent on expanding and expanding, mostly through fascistic aggression. Thousands of warriors and fighters taken prisoner were being executed throughout the year in this and other American Indian cities of blood. This puts not only the Aztecs, but numerous other Native American societies into the same category as Genghis Khan's murderers, Joseph Stalin concentration camps and the Roman crucifixions of rebellious slaves under Spartacus. Yet in the midst of this insanity, deranged religious fanaticism and fear, a special breed of men and women arose. There were those warriors and shamans of both genders who not only abhorred all that their society stood for, but were able to find and uphold radical alternatives, not political or social alternatives. Their alternatives were new ways of using the only asset we as people have, the human awareness. These wise men and women relied entirely on the capacity of the human body to perceive as their primary point of reference over many generations of struggle to discover and to know they established a code of conduct known as the warrior's way. Unlike the ethics of homicidal egomaniacs, the warrior's way emphasizes sound judgment and the ability to tell things for what they are. This also means that just because one thing may mistakenly appear to be something it does not necessarily mean that that something does not exist. 
In the early 1960s, a Peruvian-American social scientist by the name of Carlos Castaneda initiated a field research project into the culture of the practitioners of the warrior's way. He subsequently authored 12 books in which he documented all that he learned from these wise men and women over a period of 13 years. His work is currently being used by individuals who wish to apply the principles of the warrior's way to their own everyday life. One of the modes of application is called tensegrity.